Um, but there's a piece of the, of the student population we're holding back by not making these tools more readily available to them. And we can even do it at a lower price point. So, so how do you do that? So you get, sure. hypothetically, you, you know, win the election, you get on the board. Sure. How do you make these things happen? We start, so we, we build an administrative staff that's going to have, understand the strategic direction that is creating an education environment that's more efficient and more effective. The efficiency is, is our, it's our, our uh, responsibility to the community. It's spending the money the community entrusts to us in the best way possible to get the most value for our students by all the tax dollars that are, that are given to us by the community. And then the, uh, you know, the, the, the part that has to do with uh, making it more effective is finding better ways to educate our students so that we're not getting in the way. Um, if a student wants to go out and, and get 20 hours of college credit knocked out before they graduate, let's give them a path and an opportunity to do that. And let's get out of their way. It sounds like they have that already, though, because they, they offer don't. like 55 hours at normal community and 41 dual credit hours at normal west. I mean, it sounds like those do, opportunities are there. But they have to seek them out. They're not necessarily placed in front of them. And um, Heartland classes will transfer in mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. All right, they're there, and those Heartland classes you could take two of those in the semester while you're sitting there taking a class that has this just dual enrollment. The flexibility and freedom to take those classes is exponentially greater, oh. and it's a direct transfer. You could, yeah, again, my son could have he was he wanted to play golf in, in college, mm -hmm. so um, Darren is the golf coach at Heartland, he's a good friend of ours. He's like, he can come play for me, come play for me. He goes like, I just can't. I, if I did, I'd have one semester of school. Mm -hmm. Like by the time you guys go into season, I'm done with school mm -hmm. for my associate's degree at Heartland, so it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it is very different. And the cost of a dual enrollment class versus a class at the College Now program that's proctored electronically are significantly different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, the, the outcome's the same. You get three credit, you get your, your requirements satisfied in Normal West, and you get your three credit hours of college experience knocked out. Mm -hmm. But one's a very expensive way of doing it, and one's a very cost-effective way of doing it. How much do you expect that to save the district, say, so, annually? So we've looked at it not just with college now, but we've also done the analysis um, using other types of, of e-curriculum that, that exist out, out in the, kind of on a national level. Uh, we talked to a couple different companies. Edmentum was one of them. They didn't really want to talk to us very much. So Imagine Learning was a company that was more willing to share um, pricing information, um, some case study information that was out there. Um, what we're finding is we have, like, just looking at sixth graders through twelfth graders, so mm -hmm. just the junior high to high school age, well, we're finding that just by trimming a very small amount of classes, by changing maybe electives or one class per semester mm -hmm. and offering that through a true immersive electronic curriculum, that we have the ability to carve out about $11 million in, in cost from the budget. What are some of those electives that would be changed? It's it's a huge list of things. So mm -hmm. change, not change, again, not for us to under, like my job as a school board member would be to set the strategic direction. We would have administrative staff that would figure out the right way to implement that, right? Mm -hmm. And if we can truly realize that entire 11 million or maybe only 6 million of that is possible mm -hmm. because we want to look out for what's best for those students, right? Mm -hmm. There may be a kid that really wants to take a woodworking class as an elective. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be offered online, but it may not be as effective. So, what's the right way to? Right. It's <laughs> the right way to work wood, right? Is it yeah. is it electronically or is it in a shop with all the tools and stuff? I, I, I don't know that answer, but we'd have an administrative staff that would help get to the bottom of that. So, um, the cool thing with that e curriculum is that it can be taken any time. So right now, with the way it would work for many of our high school students and junior high students, is you get your, your schedule set. Mm -hmm. There's an hour during the day, maybe third hour, maybe fifth hour, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And that's that's your spot to take your elective. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go see at what, well, let's take a look at what electives are available at that time, mm -hmm. right? Um, you wanna take Cantonese? Well, we don't offer that. I mean, maybe we do, don't, don't quote me on mm -hmm. that. <laughs> but. <laughs> I understand. You wanna take Pig Latin, we don't offer that, right? right. It's something totally obscure. Um, well, that, that's something that's probably offered on the electronic curriculum side of things, mm -hmm. and it's available. So mm -hmm. giving them broader access to classes they might not otherwise be able to take, mm -hmm. and access to classes that are unrestricted, you know, by the ability to offer them at that particular time of the day. That's a powerful message for kids. Do you worry that the message does not resonate with people who went through two years of COVID? 100%. That COVID world and what we did with 
Google Classroom in our local school district. It's a travesty. But I think it goes beyond the software. It was it was the fact that you didn't have kids interacting with each other, their peers, sure. their and in this world they adults. would still interact. We, we they could do these classes in the building. It could be something that gets knocked out. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. And again, an administrative group of individuals would figure out the right way to do that for mm -hmm. the students. And there are again in talking to Imagine Learning, there's some cool. Uh, case studies and different ways of doing it and there's good and bad with any of that right mm -hmm. um, but yeah this this type of an initiative definitely gets compared to the COVID world but they're night and day different they don't even they're not it's, it's apples and oranges mm -hmm. um, the COVID world was a true failure in our, our ability to deliver content uh, to these students um, and I even kind of remember back during COVID I talk about this a little bit sometimes but we saw some emails we saw some stuff where the district was starting to pivot to use something and I, I'll never know what it was exactly I think it might have been Edmentum mm -hmm. But they are getting ready to use a true e-learning e curriculum. Mm. And in the 11th hour, they pulled back because I think they found out that the teachers that were proctoring that stuff were going to be people up in Wisconsin from the Edmentum company mm -hmm. that were contractors. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to be our local teaching staff. And I think they pulled back and they decided we're going to err on the side of teachers in this case and we're going to implement this never done before thing called Google Classroom. Um, that really, truly, because uh, our kids went through it, all of our kids were involved, and it was a complete and utter failure. Mm -hmm. So you, you would have rather seen them maybe do that ad momentum thing? Correct. It would have been, it would have at least been a tool that had a track record of mm -hmm. some level of success. It would have been a medium that was, was tested, that was, was already developed specifically for that type of delivery. Mm -hmm. Google Classroom wasn't. How have, uh, potential voters been taking it it depends so yeah. that has been one of the kind of cool challenges so not only are we running, running a campaign right now and trying to get people's votes but we're also trying to educate the community on the potential mm -hmm. and the opportunities that exist in that space and it's um many people have been very open to it many people internalize it and they're like well i work at state farm or i work at country financial and we use electronic curriculum for any type of training now mm -hmm. i've had teachers that recognize that yeah you know i got when i went back and got my master's degree 50% of those classes were available electronically. It was maybe the thing that gave me the potential to do it because I could do it at home in the evening. Mm -hmm. I could do it from a thousand miles away, whatever whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So I think we're getting kind of a cool mix of people that realize that it is um, the reality of kind of where we're heading as a society and the delivery of, of information mm -hmm. and education. Um, and then there's, again, a lot of pushback of comparing it to COVID, which I don't know how you fight that because it's not the same. Mm -hmm. We can. There's there's a lot of people who just don't like it. They don't like what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. They can come up with lots of reasons why it sucks, and there's not a whole lot we can do about that. But there's facts and data, and there's there's lots of uh, of good reasons why it makes sense. Also, mm -hmm. but again, we got to explore it. We got to find is this something that's going to be a sustainable piece? At the end of the day, we're not. We don't have teachers banging on the door to get employed right now in Unit Five. There's a teacher shortage, mm -hmm. so a piece of this may be necessitated just because we don't have butts to put in seats no i just i think for me it's hard to visualize like i hear it you know sure. like i hear that the e-learning saves 11 million but it's yeah. hard for me to visualize it because i'm like how do you like what expenses do you cut is it cutting teachers you know what i mean like it's sure. hard for me to visualize at the end of the day it's a combina it has to be a combination of teachers and administrative staff mm -hmm. um cutting cutting them or there's there's no way around it in our educational fund we have 88% of that fund dedicated to payroll. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have watched over the last five years our student enrollment drop. We're down 1,000 students over the last five years. That's about 8% of our student population. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. So we're losing people. Every year we have accelerated the increase in our spending in the district. Mm -hmm. We're hiring people, and we have hired people over the last five years that we can't afford to have. We don't have the money. The money didn't, wasn't sitting there when the year started, and it was in a worse position when the year ended. So, unfortunately, we, we have to address how we're hiring people and who we're hiring mm -hmm. and if we have the ability to, to fund those resources. And clearly today, we, we have failed in that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that it's nice to have? It's always nice to have, right? It's, the, more, the more the merrier, I guess, is the way. But as, as a school board, mm -hmm. like the administration may love having more people. The teachers union definitely loves having more teachers, more, more members that can contribute to the ongoing success of the teachers union. The school board doesn't have the luxury to care about either of those things. Mm -hmm. The school board's sole focus has to be 
on being good stewards of the resources of the community and trust to them. So their focus is on the community mm -hmm. and their focus is first and foremost on those students. Mm -hmm. It's their sole purpose. Mm -hmm. Anything else gets in the way. And if, if anything comes in conflict of those, the, an appropriate school board reaction should go back to what's best for the community, mm -hmm. what's best for the students. 